trying that thing with a, uh, a top-down camera angle to see if it helps make me look thinner and get rid of my uh, double chins. Doesn't seem to be doing much. I think I'm just fat. Anyway. <laughs> Hey everybody, Josh the RV Nerd with Bish's RV. What an intro, right? <laughs> this is starting off into, with a bang. Uh, at your popular request, actually down here at Grand Design today, to get my hands on a 245RL Transcend. Had a lot, a lot of requests for this one, and for good reason. This is basically the stick and tin sister cousin to something like a 2500RL Imagine laminated RV, but peeling out a lot of budget while still maintaining a lot of the big hitter features, and actually bringing some really interesting things to the table. First of all, I love the fact that it's got a true queen bed in it. Now, it's not an amazing mattress from the factory, but w really what is. Uh, it's an easy thing, though. If you want to get your own queen bed, it easily slots right in this thing. It's got dual entry doors, and I actually like the fact that they did not put a window in the bedroom entry door uh, because a lot of brands will do that and give you no privacy shade, so you're just putting on a free show for the neighbors every time you wake up to use the bathroom. Uh, the uh, living room of this uh, feels nice and wide open. It feels very big considering this thing's maximum weight, I think, is under 76. 600 pounds so this should make a really good fit for a lot of late model tow package kind of half tons under 30 foot got a slide for some decent destination space fantastic solo or couples camping model with some really really good kitchen prep space transcend always has a really big focus on like maximum drawers maximum cabinets maximum storage really wherever they can and you kind of see that done in this one there they really do a good job of uh, giving us a lot of space where it really counts. Um, this RV is is kind of, uh, well, it, it would probably hang around me very well because it's got a very thick skin. And after I've had a couple Coors Lights, it is good to have a thick skin around me because I get a little bitey. That's when Uncle Gary comes out of the Jekyll and Hyde closet. Neither here nor there. I'm not proud of that. It just is how it is, which is probably why I don't drink very much. But the fact is, the entire exterior skin on this thing is thicker than the average bear. Heated belly, enclosed docking station, a little bit of factory solar, bunch of good stuff, but couple points of critique, maybe a couple points of concern for you. I'm going to show you the good with the bad today, and if you like that, hit that subscribe button. Let's get in there. And I think it's important sometimes when you're uh, looking at an RV to remember that not every RV is intended to necessarily have all the widgets and whiz bangs and be the be-all, end-all. What Transcend really represents is, uh, I, I call it smarter class camping, like really high value targets without going too nuts and too insane. But a lot of times the stuff that it doesn't do is um, it could be theoretically chalked up to preferential by owners and something that could uh, kind of be caught up on. Like I'll volunteer one of those real quick here. In both the bathroom and here in the uh, kitchen and living room area, you have uh, a powered exhaust vent. You will find like most builders in a uh, stick and tin category, it is the common dollar store four inch fart fan, however. But, you know, if that's not okay with you, upgrading those vent fans is not a difficult prospect whatsoever. Heck, that's something that we could actually do for you and have all kind of rolled into your financing if that's what you're looking for. Although, that being said, I really do recommend keeping accessories and add-ons and things out of your financing if possible because that will quickly become the most expensive vent fan you've ever experienced in your life. Now, there's a couple other really kind of neat and crafty things they do here. Like, if you look back at our floor plan in a flash footage, you may remember how the dinette had some beautiful plaid work going on the sides there. Now, I'm either being facetious or not, whether or not you do or don't like plaid. So keep that in mind. <laughs> but the fact is, the side cushions are reversible. You can roll it over, flip it, and reverse it Missy Elliott style. And if you want to just get rid of that, you can. Now, without question, the overall decor in here is a lot of browns. And you may have noticed how they're using carpet in the slide floor. So I kind of opened up the, uh, the floor to uh, feedback here. What do you think about the general decor? And... Um, carpet in the slide, you know, uh, carpet in the slide can be kind of nice because it keeps your toes a little bit warm, but a lot of times it's like this where it's located in the dinette, which is probably the number one area for spills and food droppages and stuff, and probably the place you don't want carpet the most, but everybody's got a different opinion. No wrong answers. Leave me a note. Let me know. Uh, you will not find floor heating vents in these though, which is one of the, uh, nicer, little more, you know, easy cleaning factors. And, and frankly, considering stick and tin trailers, typically don't have the weather pack of like a uh, a high level laminated uh trailer or fifth wheel 
that uh, the no floor vents doesn't bother me because they maybe it's not as effective of a heating system, but the fact is they compensate for that on this with like a 35,000 BTU furnace, which is bigger than I see in some fifth wheels. So they found a way around it to make it still heat comfortably. Now uh, in the back here, that is a very nice theater seat versus what you typically find in the stick and tin category uh, because that right there you can see has the fold down center armrest. So you can put it in population control mode or you could put it into cuddle compliance, which is what we're looking at here. And uh, if you could please draw your attention to those side stands on either side of the sofa. Do you notice how there's household power outlets in the walls right down at countertop level? And you'll see that repeated as we twist and shout over here into the kitchen. That is one of the best aspects of stick and tin camper uh, production that just doesn't seem to get the credit it deserves. The walls are essentially hollow, which allows them to more easily uh, you know, run wiring through the walls and put outlets where it really matters and where you really want them. Now, this RV doesn't have a ton of campsite windows. Again, just trying to be fair here. If I uh, sit down at the sofa in the back, it's not bad. From your primary seating positions, it's not bad. You don't have maximum campsite coverage, but at the same time, that also means we don't have a window directly behind the stovetop catching grease for us, making it a little bit of a Windex nightmare. So again, there's ups and there's downs, just like everything. They don't do uh, a lot of electric space heat and fireplaces in these. Again, they do compensate with that bigger furnace, uh, but instead you'll see in a, a little bit here when we open everything up, they're very good about maximizing storage. Now you might've noticed uh, the screen get a little bit dimmer for just a second right there. That's because there is a motion sense lighting right by the entry door, which is fantastic for like, if you uh, want to go outside and hang out for a little bit and not get a big old collection of gnats and bugs uh, collected by your entry door getting in the camper, those are great. You could also just turn it off or, uh, you know, put it into always on mode. You can do a little bit of whatever you want to do there. Uh, over here in the slide, that's where you'll find our refrigerator. Now, that being said, one of the only nitpicks I have, I don't like wasted space, and usually Transcend's very good about this, but technically speaking, there is an empty, dead, unused pocket behind the refrigerator where there's no sort of storage access on the outside of the slide-out. So, I got a little bit of a question. What would you say to, like, if there was some sort of shelving or something built right here? I, I'm not saying it would be easy and convenient to get to, but at least you could kind of use it. Uh, again, no wrong answers, just it, it, just sort of an idea that bumped into my head right there. Now, if you are going to be boondocking, the RV's got some pretty respectable holding tank capacities, actually. Um, the If you read the gray tank capacity off the spec chart, by the way, the gray tank's like, why is it so big? It's because it's actually one kitchen gray and one bathroom gray, so there's two tanks. So kind of keep that in mind right there. Um, but... From the rear sofa, you might notice you don't exactly have the uh, the best shot at the entertainment center. Well, that's kind of why this TV pivots around right there. And that is a TCL Roku smart TV, by the way. And giving you a look through all the kitchen storage, did you notice like all the countertop prep space that you have in this one? Easy reach appliance outlets, again, right down by the counter. Really smart kitchen. Um, again, if I'm going to be ultra picky, a countertop flip-up extension beside the sink, I wouldn't be mad at it. But I do love the fact that they actually did give us a place for a wastebasket under the sink. That's something a lot of brands just simply don't do. I would probably swap out the, the dinette pedestal legs for a um, like a, some kind of floating leg system. Not even necessarily a big heavy duty elliptical base that's very expensive, but even like a $40 set of like, if you type into uh, Amazon um, RV folding table legs, you'll find a couple examples of what I'm talking about and get a couple different varieties that work best for you. Now the rear sofa on this is great. Um, I think some people might say, can you flip flop the sofa in the dinette? And on this one, you can't because there's not enough room behind the slide to actually put a sofa there or a, a dinette there. And that's kind of the reason this is a rear wall sofa. They were able to give you the same seating while chopping out some length, weight, and cost and still giving you the same general function. Now that does mean that maybe we don't have always the best, most idealist view of the uh, entertainment center in here. And that is why there are so many different floor plans in the RV industry. I've yet to find the one that 
everybody agrees is always the best RV. And even my favorite floor plan, a lot of people don't like for, well, for couples camping anyway, because it doesn't have a uh, bedroom privacy. So they've all got their own little ups and downs. Now moonwalking backwards here into the bathroom, I don't normally go about it this way with a walkthrough bath, but you see that hanging uh, towel rod over there. Um, what's your preference, by the way, towel rods or towel hooks? I kind of prefer the rods and bars myself. Now, <laughs> Porcelain foot flush stool is a nice find, and that is easily as fluffy friendly as you could ever hope a toilet to be in the bathroom. Now, obviously, if you're sitting here on the sofa and somebody's uh, sitting there on the toilet, you can certainly enjoy yourself a little bit of a, um, well, you know, a staring contest in the morning, which is probably not the image that you want when you first wake up in the morning. But the, uh, the fact is, from the living room area, you're not really just like staring directly at the toilet. Some people kind of like that little thing right there. Now, uh, over here, they don't do a uh, angle or radius shower. They are doing a rectangular shower. And you may notice my head's extremely up in the skylight. That's because the uh, transcends have a six and a half foot sidewall. And uh, thankfully, the skylight's really there to give us the headroom that we're going to want and need in the shower. Now, recently here, a bunch of people have kind of said, what, they don't have shower curtains. So I guess just to point out for you, you know, it, I did not mean to slam that. Sorry, if you're wearing some earbuds or something, that might have been a little spicy on the ears. That's not what I was looking to accomplish. Um, my point here is that uh, you folks drive this channel. The input that you give me really shapes the things that I, I do there. Now, um, oh, 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 I know why. I just figured out why. I noticed that you have some open face towel storage there. But, like, you just have, this is all paneled off. That's because when we get in the bedroom, there's actually drawers that occupy that space behind the shower. So kind of keep that in mind. Now, I'm actually moonwalking backwards and back in the living room a little bit to give you, you know, kind of finish up the 360 of the bathroom there. But I do like that angled uh, medicine cabinet. It's not massive, but it's enough. And it sounds funny, but I've kind of done some, like, test camping in, in RVs that have these, like, kind of long but thin bathroom counters. It is actually super, super useful because you can keep kind of like toothbrushes and, and deodorants and stuff like that sort of out over here out of the way so that whatever you're using around the sink, it's like it's not cluttered up constantly. It's kind of nice that way. It actually works very, very well. Now, in case you were curious, you do have uh, pocket sliding privacy doors on both sides of the bathroom just to kind of close that sucker off. Now, up front here, I love the fact that they, uh, your transcends all just go 60 by 80 true queen bed. I actually don't know that Grand Design ever does anything like a short queen. I think they always use at least true queens in their primary sleeping areas. Um, both sides of the bed there have some household and USB outlets, which is really, really nice. I, again, I, I'm never a fan of like open face storage. I would really prefer that to be kind of a, a cabinet. And I know that you got to climb on the bed to get to it, but a cabinet means I don't have to go to Walmart and get those wicker baskets. But kind of like we talked about adding vent fans and stuff, you know, it's not hard to do. Um, so, it, you know, if it, if it saves you a couple of bucks or if you just like the, the open look of it, you know, there you go. Nothing wrong with that. It's got a padded headboard there in case you're like me and like you have a bad dream and you you know how you ever see a dog try to run in their dreams? I've done that a couple times, and I've almost jumped in my bed and smashed my head against the headboard. Anybody else do something like that, or is that just uh, more of a uh, me-exclusive thing? I, I, I don't know. Maybe that's just a little bit more me. <laughs> um, because the, uh, the wall across from the bed slides, since it's a pocket door, they had to put the TV hookups over here on the side. I don't usually see a lot of people actually add TVs into the bedrooms of uh, trailers like this, though. Now, looking through the uh, storage in the bedroom here, kind of interesting that you don't actually have um, hanging closets on either side of the bed. It is max dresser storage. Now, if you wanted to take those shelves out and, like, add a hanging rod, I'm, I'm sure you could do that. Uh, on the opposite side of the room, though, what you will see is there's a little bit of like a jacket closet built behind the shower. They had a little extra space there, but there's not a main primary hanging clothing space. So I'm kind of curious, is that a hit or a miss? Because when I camp, I know that I'm not camping with a lot of hanging clothes. So I don't know that that really bothers me. I don't know that that really offends me, but I like the idea of being able to hang some stuff up. But then again, 
I don't know that I need to hang up anything more than just a jacket or a dog leash. So again, I'm kind of open to input there. Now, I have never been in this RV with the slide closed, but I've been in a lot of other RVs like this with the slide closed. And I think there's a pretty good chance that this slide's going to uh, cut the camper in half. Let's find out. Yeah, that's about what I expected. I don't think there's any reasonable expectation that someone's going to be able to slip between the slide and that door. It technically doesn't fully cut it off, but realistically, functionally, it does. Um, that is kind of one of the benefits of this one, having a direct entry bedroom door, is you can get to the bedroom and the bathroom from the front door, which is what I call take a nap and take crap access. That is a high-level technical term. Don't go using that if you're not prepared, by the way. But some people get a little freaked out about a door directly into the bedroom. You've got a deadbolt, so if you need the privacy, you got it. If uh, you have a little bit more of an open door policy, well... You know, you can do that too. That's just sort of uh, up to you there. But this does have, uh, you know, full functional travel access. It's going to be what I call two-stage travel access, though. If you need to make a little snacktastic stop, for that you are going to need to slide back here into your, like, living room door. And it's a little tight, but it works. It's functional enough. Even though the refrigerator door doesn't swing all the way open, I think that's enough to still qualify. And the fact is you can get to your sink, you can get to your drawers, you can get to all the major stuff that I think you're really going to want and need for a travel stop. Um, so, you know, I give it a B plus for, for travel access, but it certainly doesn't have front to back one stop shop access. And it just so happens, uh, today I come oddly well equipped to test the road mode travel access function of this refrigerator because I brought my lunchbox with me. It's, uh, it's brain food. Mmm, mmm, good. Tasty. And real quick as we step out here, I want to thank you folks. Like, one time, just on a whim, I added the, uh, the, the specs for the RV a second time as we stepped outside here. And folks are like, hey, that was actually really handy. So once again, thank you for helping drive this channel and uh, continuing to, you know, evolve and improve the things that we do here. Now, if you're taking a look at that, I, I personally feel between the uh, the total length of this one, between the total weight of this one, the GVW, because I don't like uh, giving towing suggestions based on empty weight. I think that's kind of a recipe for danger and disaster. I think the late model tow package half tons will generally find this one uh, pretty well within their range here. I don't think um, a, uh, a good half-ton tow package is going to really struggle too awful much here. Now, a couple other nice details. They have some pretty solid holding tank capacities on these. And if you notice, they did manage to plumb everything together, um, which uh, definitely makes it a lot easier when you're at your campsite. That's one of the things that I, uh, I do really like and respect about the design team here, generally speaking, at Grand Design. Like, I, I, I don't know if all the brand managers go camping themselves or if they just actually really talk to people that do, but they really seem to understand how actual camping is done. And I think that's a major secret in their sauce. Uh, now, up front here, you've got a full big pass-through compartment, although these do have a small little uh, kind of docking center right here. If I'm going to be nitpicky, um, I sort of wish there was like an extra, I don't know what to say, like a little wall right here just to enclose this. It feels like a lot of docking centers keep getting more and more open. And, you know, if, if you do have any sort of water splash, it is nice to kind of help keep that a little bit more contained, but that's just my two cents. Now, if you look down here, some simple things, battery disconnect, also battery uh, monitor here, you know, voltage monitor on this thing, which is a, a standard part of the Transcend series. Um, I feel like that monitor would be a little more useful on the inside of the RV, but I don't, I don't know. I guess it's not terrible where it's at. At least it's there, right? Now, 25 amp charge controller on these. You'll see uh, up on the roof in a little bit, 165 watt factory solar. That's really all they're offering right now. Um, and uh, people want to know, you know, what does the solar run? Well, see, that's kind of the thing. Um, solar doesn't run anything, really. Solar just charges your battery, especially in this case. Now, it is possible to get some kind of advanced fancy smart chargers that can do some different things, but that's not what this is. This is a, a smart money 
uh, you know, big hitter value kind of camper right here. So that solar package charges the battery. Now the battery then runs any of your 12 volt stuff like your lights, your fans, your awnings, slides, uh, the refrigerator. When you're plugged into park power, your uh, converter box will basically bring in part power juice and, and charge up your battery with anything that's not being used by the lights and whatnot. So that's what, you know why everything works just fine when you're plugged in. But let's say you don't have a battery on it. If you're plugged into park power, all your stuff will still run because the converter picks up the load. You don't wanna, I, I do feel you wanna leave a battery on it whenever you can though. Interesting thing though, sometimes people say, yeah, with those 12 volt fridges, you know, I can't run it in transit. No, you absolutely can. So your seven way pigtail plug on the front of this thing, assuming your truck is wired up properly and has a charge line with no battery on the tongue, the way that we're looking at it right now, plugged into uh, your vehicle, the, the, the juice coming in from just a pigtail can run the fridge and everything else. And within about an hour, even towing, that sucker will get ice cold. So that 12 volt fridge is probably one of the best options for towing and moving, which is kind of nice. Now let's talk about the whole skin package on this thing here. I mentioned it's thick skin. What am I talking about? Well, you might notice how Transcend uses a little bit different uh, exterior tin skin on these. Um, it is still technically a corrugated, but not near to the degree of a lot of other things out there. The thing is the corrugated crimp, it's called a Mesa crimp that you find on most stick and tin trailers. That is actually there to give the skin strength. It's helping support the wall. Well, this stuff is a little bit flatter, so it doesn't have that benefit. But as a result, instead of a 0.024 inch thickness, this is a 0.03 inch thickness. And up front here, they're using a 0.04 inch thickness. Now, what all that means in English is that there's more weight in the skin of this thing, but it gives it a cleaner look and it is far more repellent of impact dents and scratches because it's a little basically heavier armored if you wanna think of it that way. So it has a push pull benefit but overall, I kind of like it. Now we already saw in the front pass through, so I wanted to leave this one closed so you could see a couple of handy things. Like uh, this does have a magnet hold back. Also has uh, uh, piano hinges are like fully kind of enclosed and protected, which is really nice here in the Midwest. Uh, when you get freezing and thawing, it keeps those seals from, or uh, well, the seals too, but the, uh, the hinges from getting all sprung and busted up. Flag holder on the front here too is a nice little touch. And I'm kind of curious, what is your take on this? It seems like recently here, there's been a little bit of a shift in the consumer marketplace. You notice how they're using the anti-slip aluminum uh, fold-out entry steps as compared to um, the, uh, you know, the stable steps that a lot of brands have adopted the last couple of years. And it seems like recently here, there have been a lot of people who have wanted to kind of go back to these traditional fold-out steps like we're looking at here today. So I'm a little curious, you know, what is your two cents on that? Um, no wrong answers, I don't think. Uh, now, the power awning, it doesn't cover both doors, but notice what they did do with it because it's a decent-sized awning. It's not a small awning by any stretch, but they made it very, uh, uh, like, easily clear, the, I think, primary entry door where you're going to come and go most of the time. And, you know, if it's a, uh, a rainy day, it is nice to be able to come and go uh, out of here. Now, the underbelly of this thing, it is enclosed. It is forced air heated, which is nice. Um, I, I, I don't know that these have been tested to quite the same extremes as some of the other, like, you know, solitude and, and uh, reflection members of the Grand Design family. But uh, within this class and category, they're definitely among the, uh, the best at, um, you know, managing weather and doing extended season camping. Uh, largely due to the way that they have their uh, radiant barrier layering in this, especially across the roof line, which greatly increases the overall efficiency of the RV. Um, now, there's a lot of various R value claims in the industry. I frankly, I, I don't believe most of them. But the fact is, if you go in one of these in the summertime, even without the air conditioner running, it always feels cooler inside one of these versus most stick and tin trailers because the way that it's built is basically reflecting more sun away from the RV and not getting absorbed into it. Now, giving you a little peek up there at the, uh, the roof area, one of the other things that you'll notice that really helps with the, uh, the cooling factor is it does have an, uh, an AC vent, or I'm sorry, a uh, uh, roof attic vent built right into it. So... We've already gone past it at this point, but there was like a, a, a white hockey puck basically built right into the roof structure there. And what that's going to do is let the hot air that builds up inside the ceiling cavity breathe out. And it makes a huge difference 
uh, when you are just sitting in this thing in the screaming hot sunlight because you know there's definitely some darker accent colors uh, on the RV overall so anything you can do to help keep the sunshine out like those tinted windows like the radiant barrier all of it adds up and overall this is pretty effective uh, RV but I would like to hear from you folks any folks in like Texas or Arizona have a transcend what is your experience keeping it cool? You know, my theory is one thing, but your experience is a whole nother ball of wax. And I trust your experience over my theory any day. So that's my nerdy little take on it. I'd like to hear from you. Uh, what would you change given the opportunity? And what would you want them to not change uh, in future generations? Because sometimes that input's just as valuable. Uh, I'll leave you some links in the video description, maybe a couple other similar floor plans. Like uh, if you want the laminated Imagine version of this, I'll get you a link there. Um, but uh, I, I will also leave you a link to check availability for these, any of these that we have in stock on our website. I do want you to know that Grand Design's advertising policies do not allow us to publish discounted sale prices on a national medium like our website on youtube or anything like that um obviously we don't sell for msrp and we don't do hidden dealer fees so there's a little bit of good news for you uh but when you're ready we're ready we'd love to work with you whether you're curious or serious if you just want a quick figure on one of these contact our folks we're happy to hook you up and until next time uh, i got this one for you on your request let me know which one you'd like to see next and until then take care stay safe have fun and happy camping everyone Did you hear that?